Last time we defined uh, algebras, morphisms of algebras, and um, initial algebras. And so when you, uh, what an algebra is for is for an endofunctor like f from some category to itself. Then you can ask whether that functor has an initial algebra, for example. Um, and so an algebra is a pair of an object in the category together with a map from f of that object to the object. Um, and so this is just the definition, like a morphism is like you have a map from the carrier to the carrier that commutes with the algebras. And say, oh, and what we didn't define last time was co-algebras. So a co-algebra is almost exactly the same. It's just that your map, instead of going from f of c to c, goes from c to f of c. And um, right. So this, the algebras and their morphisms form a category, and the initial object in that category is called the initial algebra. And this gives you things like lists, and the natural numbers, and binary trees, and stuff like that. And co-algebras give you things like infinite streams, and infinite binary trees, and things like that. Um, uh, right, and so in initial algebra, the important thing about the initial algebra is that for any other algebra you can define, and that other algebra we're going to see, uh, we're going to go over some examples, and then we'll talk about like some theorems. But we're going to see that that algebra, some other algebra you define, phi, is basically telling you, in the, in the, for initial algebra, that's kind of telling you, for any element of that initial algebra, what do you want me to do with it? It's telling you a lot of stuff about what you're going to do. <laughs> we'll, we'll make that precise or in a second, I think. So what happens is if you have any algebra whatsoever, then you get this unique map called the catamorphism for that algebra from the initial algebra, which I'm calling mu f, because that's what Ed Komet calls it and other people, uh, to, to our algebra here, c. OK, so um, that thing, if the initial algebra is lists, it's going to tell you how to fold up a list. And if that thing, if the initial algebra is trees, it's going to tell you how to like take any tree and kind of decompose it or turn it into an el element of type c. So we'll, we'll go through that in a, in a, in a second. Um, but yeah, that's what an initial algebra is. Any questions just on the definition from yesterday? Yeah. Sorry, um, so when, when you're saying uh, on the upper right there that F C to C with B is any algebra, yep. it's any algebra with the same functor F. Yep, any F algebra, thanks. Yep. And it, it can have a different carrier type? Yep, any carrier type in your category. Sure. So, um, so here's a functor from set to set. F1 of S is the naturals for any set S. And F of F1, I'm defining a functor here. F1 of any morphism is the identity on the naturals. It's the constant functor. What is the initial algebra? So the initial algebra has to be some set S and a map from F1 of S to S. And it has to be initial. Any other algebra has to receive a map from this. Does anyone know what the answer is? Maybe this is hard. Yes. Yes. OK, so there, what is f? What do you want f n to n to be? Right. f n is the naturals, and I'll take it to be the identity. And why is this initial? Because if someone gives us a map from f of s to s for any s, then they've given us, this is the naturals. f of s is the naturals for everything. So, uh, and this is the naturals. And somehow it's obvious that this must be, for this to commute, oh, this must be the identity because it's f of something. So this is identity. This is identity. So this map must be this map. If someone gives us a map from the naturals to their s, some phi, then we get a unique map here making this commute, namely phi. There's no choice. Yep. Okay, what are the morphisms for f again? f takes morphisms in set to morphisms in set, takes every object to the naturals, takes every morphism to the identity on naturals. Okay. And that's how I knew this was identity there because I said that had to be f of f. OK, so that's number one. What about number two? 
It's the identity functor. What is the initial algebra for it? Not that you should like necessarily like be able to just do this, but you might be able to do it, or you might not. <coughs> it just kind of depending on your experience with this subject, maybe. The empty set, yep. So I will take the empty set and the empty set. That this is f of the empty set, which is just the empty set. And for any other thing, and the identity morphism between them, so I take x and f of x, which is just x in number two. I need a unique, ma I need a map. Someone have a statement? Uh, that is, oh, sorry, for any map here, you're right. For any map here, from x to x, thank you, um, I need a unique, there is a unique morphism from empty set to x making this commute. Do you agree that there's only one map making, going from here to here because this is initial? And this definitely commutes because this map and this map are both mapped from the empty set and therefore they must be the same. So this is again, the, so here the empty set is the initial algebra, yeah. I erase the f because in, in number two, f2 is the identity, so I just can erase it. Yeah, thanks. So I'm a bit confused about the terminology because when you're asking what is the initial algebra, I thought for number one you said the naturals. Natural. Yeah, the naturals with this particular yeah. algebra yeah. structure map. The naturals are the carrier, this is the structure map here, the empty set is the carrier, and the identity is the structure map. Right. What is the terminal, it turns out that the terminal coalgebra, final coalgebra for this is also the naturals. Um, and the final coalgebra for number two is the one element set. <coughs> I'm not going to explain it be, just for time reasons, but. Terminal objects in the category? So final means terminal. Sorry, final means terminal. Apparently we haven't said that. Sorry about that. The final object and terminal object mean the same thing. People say it both ways. Thanks, Brendan. Um, okay, number three. I'll just tell you that the initial algebra, note by the way that the final coalgebra is not the same as the initial algebra. That's usually the case. Um, in number three, it turns out that it's the naturals and the, carri the carrier is the naturals, and the function is that given a, we need a map from one plus the naturals to the naturals, and what we use is that one goes to zero, and n goes to n plus one. So this is a one element set, this is the naturals, and what this is telling us, what this algebra is telling us, the fact that it's initial is telling us is that for any other if I have 1 plus x for any x, and a map from 1 plus x to x, so I know where 1 goes, maybe it goes to x0, I know where every x goes, it maybe it goes to f, so f from x to x, then there's a unique map from the naturals to x, making this diagram commute. I wrote 0 comma successor. So it says, take any natural number. If it's zero, it came from this thing, this one. In which case, it went down to this one and went to x zero. So zero maps to x zero in this unique thing here, in this catamorphism. Cata of zero is zero. This cata is for x naught f. It says it must send zero to zero, and it sends like, one, one is the thing that came from zero here. And I already knew that zero went to x zero here and then went to f of x zero. So kata of one will be f of x zero. And kata of two will be f of f of x zero. And you can just trace through this forever. If you have questions about it, again, come up after class, um, unless they're very brief. And so this is, this is just kind of tells you that there's this kind of uh, induction thing, where you have, if you have any initial element of x, x0, some, some choice, x0, and some <coughs> way of turning x's into x's, then I'll give you a map from the naturals to x that just continually loops through, takes 5, and just hits f, 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 f of 0. That's what the initial algebra is encoding. So it's really encoding general recursion. Um, 
it's, uh, or really it's called primitive recursion, but because of how Haskell works, you can do general recursion this way too using co-inductive types. But anyway, so, um, uh, so F4 turns out to be list of nets. The initial algebra is, is list of natural numbers. It takes one to the empty list and takes the natural and a list to the cons, like where you add one new element to that list. And number five gives you binary trees. Um, binary trees with n labeled nodes. So elements of the final co uh, the initial co the initial algebra for F five are things like three, two, six, zero, one, etc. I mean that all the nodes are labeled with natural numbers. So it, natural number labeled everythings. It says a binary tree is either a natural number, which we're thinking of as a leaf, or it's a natural number with two binary trees, which we're thinking of as the two children. And it just, when you take a catamorphism, it says if, if you have some set S and you know how to interpret natural numbers in S, so you have a map from natural numbers to S. And you know how to take a natural number and two S's and give yourself a new S. Then you will be able to interpret this binary tree by taking your S for this, taking your S for this, taking your natural number and like kind of taking zero and then the two things. It'll just kind of let you put them all together. Hopefully that was a little ambiguous or hard to see, not well said, but you can take something like this. If you have uh, naturals, plus naturals times s times s, and you can turn one of those into an s, then I'll give you a way to turn any binary tree into an s. Yeah. So in a sense, every term separated by plus corresponds to a data constructor -ish. That's right. So you would turn this into a data constructor. So f5 was, f5 would be something like data f5 equals uh, leaf n or uh, node n, I guess I should say int or something, um, uh, f5, f5. That's right. So every plus turns into an kind of an either or a bar, and every times turns into a kind of, yeah, into something like this. So the fixed point of this endo functor F5, F5 is now an endo functor, takes a data type and returns a new data type. I would have to define F map. Um, maybe that was the cost. Uh, and uh, the fixed point of this endo functor will be the thing I wrote just before. It'll be binary trees. Okay, yeah. How do you know how to fix point? Right, good question. So for that, we will get to that at the end of the talk today. Um, not to tell you, yep. So there's something called Adam X theorem. And it says for, for endo functors with form, I'll tell you later. Um, every en every endo functor has an initial algebra, and everything we've said so far is, is of the form we need. Yeah. Why, why is that imply fixed point? Oh, right. And then, great. And the thing we'll do before that is Lambex theorem. <laughs> if FC to C is initial, is initial algebra, it's a fixed point. 
And both these theorems have an, er, a corresponding version for coalgebras, final or terminal coalgebras. And this was supposed to mean reverse the arrows. Okay, questions? Okay, let's keep going. I kind of want to tell you how to get the depth. So <coughs> after, we're running a little late, so after class we can ask, ask about the depth of a binary tree or how you can use uh, catamorphisms to define plus taking n times n to n. If you want to, <coughs> so you can use catamorphisms to do plus, times, <coughs> divide, minus, mod, all the things that you're used to with natural numbers and lists in general. You can do all, that, all the stuff that you're kind of used to, finding primes, etc., using just catamorphisms, like without even using like tail of list or just catamorphisms and um, like pairing, stuff like that. And, and composition. So these are, catamorphisms and anamorphisms are very, very powerful. Like you can pretty much do everything in Haskell once you have them. Not that, you've, not that you can do type classes or all these things, like you can't do all the fancy syntactic sugar, but you can do all of the programs. Okay, yeah. So, so I'm, again, just clarifying terminology, for each of these what you've listed is the fixed point carrier type that emerges? And therefore yeah, the, I've, listed, I've listed the initial algebra for each of these functors. The carrier type. Yeah, the carrier type. Uh, yep. And there's a structure map involving that carrier type, which is kind of implicit. You're leaving implicit. I'm leaving, leaving implicit. Okay. But I kind of said it out loud. If I had either natural or a natural and two binary trees, I would take the two binary trees. In yep. the second case, I'd take the two binary trees and pop them together with a natural node, a natural no node labeled above. Yep. Okay, so let's do anamorphisms because we didn't really talk about that much yet. So let's say an example is f of s. I'm going to give you a functor from set to set. f of s is naturals times s. So it takes 1, 2, 3, the set, to the set 1, 2, 3 times nat. Okay, okay so what is the final coalgebra? It turns out that it's infinite streams. So it's N nat to the nat, or you might write naturals, arrow naturals. In other words, it's like uh, 5, 3, 2, 6, 8, just some infinite weird stream might be an element, is an element in this nat to the nat thing. So infinite streams, the final coalgebra is a set of infinite streams. And what is, well that is the carrier, and what is the map, and that's kind of Fancy. So what you do is you, s you need a map from naturals to naturals to the naturals. So given a function from naturals to naturals, I'm going to give you both a natural and a map from naturals to naturals. So what do I do with f? Some inf so here f is this, like, if this thing was called f, we would say f of 0 is 5, f of 1 is 3, etc. So what do I do with the infinite stream f? I take it to f of 0, so it returns 5, and then it returns f of successor. So it would return 5 and then the infinite stream 3, 2, 6, 8, 8. Etc. That's what this in terminal coalgebra will do. It'll take any stream, tell you the first element, and then tell you the rest of the stream. That's what the kind of best thing you can do with this uh, functor is, and it's the best in some sense, it's the best in the sense that it is terminal. Meaning that if you have, if you have, if you have your own s and a map from s to the natural, sorry, and a map from s to natural times s, I'll give you a map um, s to n to the n. I'll give you an infinite stream for any s. And not only that, I'll make this diagram commute. So let's give an example. So let's say S is the naturals. Slightly confusing maybe, but, and my phi, or maybe I'll call it psi, psi taking naturals to naturals times naturals. 
I'm going to send n to n comma col of n, where col of n, this is coming from the word colots, is, well, if n is divisible by 2, then do n over 2. And if not, do 3n plus 1. And so I'm going to take any natural number and give you that natural number back together with this colotsy thing. And the weird thing about the colot, what, what colots is about is that if you take like 5 and run it through this thing over and over and over, it'll just always get to like 4, 2, 1, 4, 2, 1, 4, 2, 1. Um, you can look it up later. The colots conjecture is, is that. So what happens here is that for some, what this is telling us, the fact that there's a terminal coalgebra for whatever weird map I decided to write down, I could have written down anything in the world here. Um, there's our map that takes n to n comma colots of n. There's the infinite stream thing that takes an infinite stream, returns its first element, and returns the rest of the stream. And there's a unique map here called Anna of, I guess, n comma colops of n. But I'll just call it Anna. And here's, I copy the naturals, and I use Anna on the right. And here I go f of 0 comma f composed successor. And the fact that this commutes tells you exactly what Anna has to be. We know that for any n, for all n, we get two equations. One is that if I trace it around and look at the first component, I see I get the, the n itself and then the n itself. So I get that n equals whatever I get by going this way, um, Anna n of 0. So Anna, uh, Anna n is our infinite stream that we get when we apply Anna to n. And then we, we look in the first component, we get we get 0. So Anna n of 0 is, is n. And we know that uh, for all n, Anna of, let me put it the other way, Anna n of 0 is n. And Anna uh, n successor of m, or m plus 1, is Anna of the colots of n with m. So if you work this out, it's just going to say that like Anna 5, which is an infinite stream, it'll be like 5, 16. I'm not going to write it all out, but you, this will just basically do, it'll make this infinite stream of the colots thing. So I'm not, I'm not sure whether you followed all this, but the point is, no matter what you put in here, whatever function you want from any carrier n to n times that carrier, this will give you a map from n to infinite streams, where it just keeps running through, taking your number and kind of like running it through the stream over and over and over and over. Does that make sense? Yeah. It is so for this. The question was: Is it true that for all functors? The, the final coalgebra is infinite streams. And no, that's only for this, uh, for that functor I gave you there. For example, for this functor, the final coalgebra was the naturals. For this functor, the final coalgebra was 1, etc. But for this functor, um, written there, the final coalgebra is infinite streams. And the anamorphism takes any other coalgebra and gives you a map from it to infinite streams. OK. So let me write down Lambeck's lemma, or theorem, um, because it's really, really, uh, it's beautiful, I think. And like the proof is like just hard enough, but just you can definitely follow it. If anyone doesn't follow, please let me know. So, um, so the statement is, um, let f of, what did I call it? I have a name for it. Oh, mu. 
f of mu f to mu f by, did I give that a name? Um, <coughs> what did you say? A? Thanks. B, an initial algebra. So you have some functor f, and you have an initial algebra. Then A is an isomorphism. No matter what category you're in, no matter what functor you have from that category to itself, if you have an initial algebra, then this map itself is an iso, meaning that mu f is a fixed point of f. OK, so what's the proof? So suppose, OK, suppose f, to f mu f is initial. OK, that's kind of easy. OK, well, one interesting other algebra you can always get from this is um, then f of a taking f of f of mu f to f of mu f is an algebra. I mean, of course it's an algebra because any map from f of something to that something is an algebra. So I found one by just writing f of a. And so I have f of mu f, that's the initial one. I have f of mu f and f of f of mu f. And since this is an algebra and this is initial, I get a unique catamorphism. Making this commute. What happened? Yep, thanks. So I f map kata, I apply f to the, the functor f to the morphism kata, and I get this commuting, commuting diagram. I think it'll be nice to, instead of calling this kata, I'm going to call it um, x kata, so x, just to make things easier, f of x. I hope it's easy. Maybe it's not easier. I'll just keep it. Sorry. Keep it. OK. Uh, so now what I want to do, I want to convince you that this diagram commutes. This one down here. And what is this map going to be? This map I want to take to be, uh, why is this hard? This will be A, because I have A. So I get to use A. And this one will be f of A. It's just A with f. And then this one is A, the original top guy. Why does that bottom diagram commute? It's actually not hard. They're the exact same maps. So this one definitely commutes, right? This is just f a and then a, f a and then a. OK, that commutes. The only reason to write it here is to make it, make it easier for me to read. So what I know is that this is an algebra, a, and this is an algebra, a. And there is a unique, since, since this is initial, there's a unique map from this one to this one. What that since the identity is certainly mapped from this one to this one, kata and then a has to be the identity on mu f. Because the identity is a map of algebras, and there's a unique map of algebras, so this one must be the identity. Any questions on that part? We're not done yet, but almost. So now I know that if I go from here to here and back, I get identity. And my whole goal was to show that these two things were isomorphic. So I've shown half of it already. I've shown one round trip. And the other round trip, I say that, um, let's see. Well then, if I apply f of this, I know that f of a composed f of kata is f of identity. But that's just identity, because f preserves composition and f preserves identity. So what does that say? f of kata and then f of a is identity. So this is identity. But this equals this, because the first diagram commutes. So a and then kata. So we know that um, this thing itself is a and then kata. 
So a, a and then kata is this, then this, which is f of the identity, which is the identity. And therefore, a composed kata is identity, and kata composed a is identity. And so they're isomorphic. Yeah, and that's the end. Probably. Probably, yeah. I, I don't know, but probably. I mean, if you think so, then I, I'm guessing it's true. Yeah. So, um, how come when you use the f of identity is equal to identity, you get a then kata as opposed to kata then a just like before? This one? Yeah, like what is the order switch? I took the one we did before, uh -huh. and I applied f to it directly. Yeah. And so it's f of a composed f of kata is f of id. So you believe this line there? Mm -hmm. And then you're wondering about this equality? Yeah. This equality is exactly reading off the check mark here. It says that A and then kata is the same thing as F of kata, then F of A. Oh, I see. Okay. Yep. And that completes the proof. I mean, you have to kind of look at it or do it for yourself, maybe, but that's it. So any questions? This proves that in any category, any F, any function from that category to itself, the initial algebra will always be a fixed point. Where, sorry, where, where do you get the, the fixed point? Oh, that, what fixed point means is that when I apply, when I look at this, uh, what do we call this thing? Structure map? It is an isomorphism, meaning that f of mu f is isomorphic to mu f itself. I see. Okay. So let's give an example. Um, Sorry, was there another question? So this right there already tells us how to get the tail of a list or to decrement a natural number. We just figured out how to decrement a natural number or take the tail of a list, but how? Well, say you have, a, let's do lists. Natural numbers are kind of lists of unit, if you want. They're lists of ones just how long they are. So let's take f uh, from set to set. Take f of a set to 1 plus natural, say, times that set. The initial algebra of this endofunctor is list. List nat. Okay. So we have f of list nat to list nat. And f, this is the initial algebra, f is 1 plus nat times list f nat. So this function takes 1 to the empty list and takes a natural number and a list of naturals to the cons. And what we just said is that it's interesting for some reason to apply f to both sides. Well, I don't even need to do this. This kata thing here is the inverse of that, right? This guy, we found out, whatever it was, was the inverse of A. So what we're really interested in is the fact that this thing, A, has an inverse. It says for any list N, there's some way of take deconstructing it into either one, like the terminal type, or a natural and a list of naturals. And it's the undo. So it takes the empty list to like nothing, it takes it to left, and it takes any other list and pulls off the head and the tail. In the same way, if we had a, a natural number, we would either get like zero or we would get um, the decrement of that number. So I don't, know, I don't know if that, yeah, we can talk about that if that wasn't clear. But any questions, quick questions? Yeah. But from this, what makes it necessary that Yeah, what makes it, the question was, what makes it so that, that this thing, what we called kata, kata of f a, uh, what makes it so that this thing is the, does what I said, namely takes the empty list and spits out, spits out <coughs> one and takes everything else and spits out the head and tail. And the reason is that this is inverse to this. So what a did is it took th this guy into the empty list and took a list, it took five comma three, two, one, and sent it to 5, 3, 2, 1. So kata fa inverse is that. Okay. 
Okay, any questions? Yeah. Is the converse true? Are all fixed points initial No, not all fixed points are initial algebras. So for this guy, the final coalgebra is possibly infinite streams. So um, the initial algebra are finite lists. The final coalgebra is possibly infinite, infinite streams. In Haskell, those would behave exactly the same way because it's lazy, but that is not something that the category theory sees, mm. as far as I know. Yep. Are we supposed to look at the counter and then see that this fixed point is listed? One question you might be asking is, how do I know, given a functor, what the initial algebra is? And that is um, Adam X theorem, which is what we're doing next. Other questions? Like, in the beginning, I said, here's a bunch of functors. Now, what are the initial algebras? And like, people came up with things out of their heads. And a lot of them were right, and some were wrong. I don't know if anyone got anything wrong. Maybe I just started saying it myself. But there's a way of just formulati formulaically creating, finding the initial algebra. And that's what we'll do next. OK. But to do so, we have to define something called directed limits, or directed colimits. There's, an, 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 there's a dual notion where all the arrows are reversed for something called direct limits, and that's how you would find final algebra, final coalgebras. But we'll just be talking about initial algebras, just because everything's going to be dual. And the idea is, and this isn't just an idea, this is like a special case. Um, there's something called telescoping uni unions. Maybe you've heard of these, like, it's like a big union of like, sorry, those are supposed to be contained. Um, so for example, the union over all natural numbers of the interval 1 over 2 to the n comma 1. This is like uh, the interval 1 half 1 union, 1 quarter 1 union, 1 eighth 1. So it's like, on this number line, you have like that thing, union, that thing, union, that thing, union, that thing. And the total union would be called the direct colimit of this sequence. So this is the idea. We take this telescoping union. But to make it more precise, um, what happens is you have, you have some infinite sequence of sets. So let's suppose, suppose given an infinite sequence of sets. I'm doing directed colimits in set for a while. So an infinite sequence of sets. So you have set A0, and you have some map, say, F01 to A1 and f12 to a2, and f23 to a3, and so on. This is a set, this is a function, this is a set, this is a function. Then we can take what's called the colimit, its colimit is basically the union of all these sets, modulo and equivalence relation, is Um, the colimit is if the set of all pairs n a, where n is in n and a is in a n. So it says, pick out any stage you want and give me an element of that stage. But I want to make certain things equivalent. So where this little twi twiddle thing means it's a relation. It's the smallest, it's the equivalent relation. If you don't know what an equivalent relation is, I probably will have to tell you afterwards, um, after class. Where twiddle is the equivalence relation, actually I'll try to explain it in words kind of as we go, is the equivalence relation generated by uh, saying that A, that N, comma a 
is equivalent to a, n prime a prime if n is less than n prime and f n n prime of a is a prime. So what, I'm, what I implicitly am defining is like f27 to be like f12, then f23, then f34, all the way up to f67. So I'm just like implicitly defining these longer f's by just composing the smaller one. What I'm saying is, what is an element of this colimit? The colimit is a new set. What set is it? Its elements are given by picking a finite stage, picking an element in that finite stage. But if you pick like A in here, and I pick A prime in there, and our F thing took your A to my A prime, we don't double count it. Just like over here, we didn't double count all these different, like they were kind of contained in, inside of each other. We, we don't want to double count them. So this is the colimit. It says pick something anywhere you want. That's an element. But as far as it goes on, it's still the same element. And we're going to use the idea of colimit now defined. So this is it for colimits. We're going to use the idea of colimit to tell ourselves, to figure out what the uh, initial algebra of an endofunctor is. And this does not work for all endofunctors, but it works for all endofunctors we've done so far. And there is a way, like there is a condition. Adam X theorem gives us a condition, uh, which I may be able to say, um, when, uh, for when it works. So any questions about what we're trying to do and where we are? Yeah. So, sorry, um, is MX, well, this is probably going about, but just for training purposes, um, is MX theorem, does MX theorem say something about existence or about instability? Adam X theorem tells us, if you, tells us, if you give me an endofunctor F, and F has a certain form or a certain property, then I will tell you the initial algebra for F, okay. and it is the following thing, colon, okay. blah. Okay, so um, suppose, maybe I will be able to say it. Suppose F taking C to C is an endofunctor. In other words, a functor from C to itself. Um, consider if a colimit O, wait a minute. Um, ah. Let me do this. Let me do this for sets because I don't remember what the condition is that's giving me the thing I was about to say. So suppose I have any functor from set to set. If a colimit for the following sequence exists, what sequence do I use? Well, Bartosz kind of alluded to this the other day, yesterday. So he said we we had this f x this functor for expressions. And he said, well, if you apply that to the empty set, you just get like const and you get like string and int or something. And if you apply it to itself, you get this and if you apply it to itself. So what we do is we take the empty set, we apply f to it, and there's a unique map here because empty set is initial. So I have this. <coughs> and now I get a map from that to f of f of, of the empty set by doing f of this unique map. And then I do f of that. And do that forever. And do the telescoping union, or more precisely, the direct colimit. So if that exists, and f preserves it, then it is the initial algebra or an initial algebra. All initial algebras are isomorphic, but this is one of them. So let's do it for list. Yeah, what it means is that if you apply f to everything in the sequence and then take the colimit, it's the same as taking f, t take the colimit of that, the same thing as taking f of this colimit. So f preserving a colimit means that. Yeah. <coughs> oh, <coughs> then colim of this sequence okay yeah the colim of that sequence is an initial algebra and I'm not telling you what the structure map is 
Maybe I should, but I just don't have time, I don't think. If I have time, we'll get to it, but I'd rather tell you uh, how it works for list. And then afterwards, we can talk about um, what the structure map is. Basically, the fact that f preserves it, preserves that colimit, is going to give us the structure map. Um, OK. So let's do the initial algebra for f of s equals 1 plus naturals times s. We know the initial algebra for this is supposed to be list. And now we're going to construct it without having to know it in advance. We're just going to construct it using Adam X theorem. So what this theorem says is that we take, F, we take empty set and we go to F of empty set. And this thing is 1 plus naturals times empty set. I'm just going to write that. 1 plus naturals times empty set. And that's just 1. So we have empty set mapping to 1, and there's a unique map there. And then we do it again. We take f of 1, and we get 1 plus naturals times 1, which I'm just going to write as 1 plus naturals. The fact that it's going down each time is just me simplifying, nothing else. OK, and then I do f of that thing, and I get 1 plus naturals times 1 plus naturals. But that's 1 plus naturals plus naturals squared. Naturals times naturals. And if I go on and on, I get 1 plus naturals plus naturals squared plus naturals cubed plus naturals fourth. And what is an element of that? Well, it's an element, in one of the, an element of a coproduct is an element of one of the sum ends. So an element of this thing is going to be some finite thing, like, and then that many naturals. Right, so what's an element? of 1 plus naturals plus naturals squared plus naturals cubed. Well, it's either 1, the empty list, the na a natural, 2 naturals, 3 naturals. And as we take this telescoping union, we just get any number of naturals. Yeah. Can you clarify what it means by F preserving the colimit of star? Yeah, so F of the colimit of a diagram is isomorphic to the colimit of F of that diagram. Now, that doesn't help much. But what it's saying is, <laughs> that's what it means for f to preserve colimits. It means if I hit this thing with f, so f, f squared, f cubed, and take the colimit of that, I will get a map from the, origin, from the colimit of that to f of this colimit, and I want that to be an isomorphism. Um, like if you apply f to it, then you just get the same thing, but starting one. Uh, yes, that's right. Yeah. So, is, I, is that a rabbit hole worth going down? It I don't think it's worth going down right now, but it's worth talking about afterwards for sure. Okay. Okay. Um, any other questions? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, the exclamation point here. You've used exclamation. Oh, did we not define that? Exclamation point is, is how category theorists to know when there's a unique something. Right. And so f of x. Yeah, it's a little bit funny. So um, this is like, some people call it absurd, which I think is a weird name. But anyway, uh, uh, it's the map from the empty. It's absurd because you shouldn't ever have any elements of this, but it's not absurd to have this map. So that's what, anyway, there's a unique map here. I can apply f to any map, and I'll get another map. Right. And I can apply f to that and get another map. So, so you're. So exclamation point is referring to that unique one bound at the very first yes. one. And you're just indicating f of the yes. same. Yes, later. yes, okay, The question was, the, all these exclamation points I've been writing, what are they? Well, this one makes sense. It's the unique map from empty set to this thing. And then I just keep applying f to that. Okay, okay any other questions? So we could have done the same trick for any of the endo functors we've had so far, say binary trees. You plug an empty set, you take that thing that takes, it says either a natural or two of these, and it'll just turn, it'll kind of just like keep building bigger and bigger binary trees. Yeah. Are we plugging the empty set because it's the Yes. Remember when I said like I put a C here originally and I said, oh, I better put set because I don't know exactly what I need. I knew I, what I was thinking in my head is I know I need an initial object. But like, I wasn't sure if I had all the assumptions, so I just wanted to be safe. But yes, this was the initial object, and it's how, it's how this thing is constructed. Is it possible to have an initial object where there is no initial object? 
It is possible to have initial algebra when there's not an initial object. That was a question. But it wouldn't be constructed this way, obviously. In any category, the identity functor always has, what? That's not true. OK, in any category, if you take any object and look at the constant functor on that object, it'll have an initial algebra. But the category might not have an initial object. So that's a, an example. Sorry. OK, other questions? Yeah, last uh, one. In this case, the maps are the same Yes. So this literally is the This literally, in this case, is a telescope. Is uh, I guess, let's see, this, um, I don't know if it's always the case. I don't see why it should be, but I don't know. I mean, maybe F would have to preserve injections, or I don't know what it would have to be. Um, any other questions? Okay, let's stop, and feel free to come up and talk.